It's a big weekend. It is baby dedications. It's child dedications. It's all of the above. And uh, for those of you who are guests of our parents and our families, I know that they are so thankful to have their family and friends with them to celebrate this uh, special morning with them. Uh, Let me just say from the outset, today is not about salvation. Uh, Today's not about anything magical that's gonna happen in the lives of these kids. Today is an opportunity for these parents to just stop, to pause, uh, to catch their breath, to get a breath, to, uh, to, to move out of this phase that we get in as parents that we just feel like we're, we're sucking wind from a coffee stirrer in Niagara Falls. Any parents with me on that? Uh, it's, a, it's a moment for us. Uh, as parents and as a church family to focus on what really matters most to our kids. And our hope is that today would truly mark a time of commitment where as parents you decide together with your family and friends to parent your children intentionally. That you would realize and embrace the fact that you are the primary influence in the life of your child and that what you do really matters. Because what your kid learns about life, what they believe about their heavenly father will be learned from you. Uh, when I think about the passage that, uh, that God has for parents, one of my favorite passages is found in the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, it's, the, it's this passage and this story in a time in Israel's history where Moses stood before all of the people and addressed the parents in the audience and shared one of the most important things that you and I as parents could ever embrace. Moses said this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. From the very beginning, Moses knew that the people who would have the greatest potential of passing on the truth of God's word to future generation are the parents, not the priests, not the pastors, not the rabbis, not the religious leaders, but parents. Because the truth is you as parents will be the ones who are walking along the way every day with your kids. Uh, You're gonna be the ones who are making the school lunches, who are who are packing those and dropping little notes of encouragement. Uh, Parents are gonna be the ones who are making breakfast, who are sharing meals, who are having the most opportunities to impact their children. I'll take it even one step further. Your child's primary model for what it means to have a relationship with God is you. And that's a lot of pressure. And it's too late to back out now. But here's what I want you to hear me say. You're not gonna be the perfect parent but God is full of grace and mercy and he will fill in the gaps. God knows you're not gonna be perfect. And so the intent of today is not to hold up some kind of impossible standard for you to try to live up to, but to encourage you to be real in your relationship with God, to put things in your life that'll challenge you to be growing in your personal relationship with Jesus. The second thing is you're not alone. So you're not gonna be a perfect parent, but you're not alone. Raising kids is not easy. And the best parents don't do it alone. That's why we as your church family are here with you. We truly care about the spiritual growth of your child. And we want to be your strongest support and your biggest fan as you guide your kids into growing a relationship with Jesus. So I want to welcome up our kids pastor, uh, Kim Counts. Only the best in the country. And she's going to lead us in this time of dedication. Awesome. Good morning. I paid him big bucks to say that, so I'm going to have to work some extra hours this week. Um, So, you guys, we have six families dedicating children at this service. Thank you. And at the next service, we have two more. So, I just want to encourage you, as families come up, would you ask the Holy Spirit to highlight how you can come alongside of them, how you can serve them? Um, You know, whether it's bringing a meal, sending a text, seeking them out on a Sunday morning and checking out how how they're doing, 
um, serving in kids' ministry. There's my plug. Um, but there, there's a lot. We have a, we have a growing church, and we need a lot of hands to hold these kids and to show them what Jesus' love looks like and feels like. So be listening to the Holy Spirit, okay? So our first family is the Our Camps. Come on down. Awesome. So when the families come up, they're going to share, they're going to introduce themselves, and then they're going to share a little bit about either the child's name or something special for them. So listen up and hold on to something regarding that family. Okay? Good morning, all. My name is Jacob Auerkamp, and this is my wife, Emily, and this is Luke. And in- say hi, Luke. Say, say hi. hi. Oh, he's shy. <laughs> Um, we just wanted to share um, Luke's uh, life verse, who wants to share that, is Numbers 624, and that's the blessing. And I've been singing that song over him since the day I found out I was pregnant, and I still sing it to him every night. It's going to make me cry. Um, but that song's super significant to us because um, it's not just about us. It's about the love that God has for our families and his future family and generation, and we're really grateful that our whole family, including his godfather, are here to support us along with our, our church family. So thank you guys. That's you. Okay, you can walk down there. Okay, Barbarinos. I guess I should scoot over here in the center, huh? Sorry about that, guys. So I had a chance to spend some one-on-one time with each of these families, and it enriched my month so much just getting to step into their homes and their hearts and um, what a special time this has been come go ahead and come on over in the center sorry I started that off on the side I don't know why I did that Um, who would like to introduce your family hello everyone my name is Kevin this is my wife Emily and my one and a half year old Maggie and I also have a four and a half year old Caleb so uh, supporting from the stands (laughs) I just wanted to share a little bit about Maggie's name. So her name is Margaret Lynn, and that's after um, the two women in our life that we love the most, our moms. Um, My mom's name is Margaret, and um, Kevin's mom's name is Linda. So we came up with Margaret Lynn. Love that. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. The next family is the Fernaris. Come on down. It's so funny, they're all trying to keep their kids happy in the waiting. <laughs> I know, this, sorry, I didn't want to trip over it. <laughs> Come on up. Hi, Jack. Who's introducing? I am. Okay. Good morning. My name is Cassie. This is my husband, Jacob, and our one-year-old son, Jack. Um, can you wave hi? Hello. Hi. Um, It has just been such a privilege and blessing and joy to be Jack's parents. Jack was named after my grandpa, who um, is just an amazing man of God and has created a legacy in our family. Um, And they also have the same birthday, just 85 years apart. Um, His middle name is James, which is a family name on both sides, and we are so blessed to... um, come from incredible, incredible families. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just going to share a prayer that we pray over Jack um, every night that really just um, represents our hopes for him and who we hope he becomes. Um, so it goes like this. Um, Dear Lord, bless Jack's feet. May they bring good news. Bless his legs. May they carry on in times of suffering. Bless his back. May it be strong enough to bear the burdens of others. Bless his arms to hold the lonely and his hands to do good work. Bless his neck, may he turn his head toward the poor. Bless his ears to discern truth, his eyes to see beauty, and his mouth to speak encouragement. Bless his mind, may he grow wise. And above all else, bless his heart, may he learn to love you and all that you have made in the right order. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, the Nowlands. Come on down. (laughs) 
Awesome. Wow, two happy children. I'm impressed. <laughs> Hello, um, I am Lauren, this is my husband Alex, and big sister Kinsley, and this is Maverick, who is seven months tomorrow. And Kinsley's three and a half, right Kinsley? Um, you know, Lauren and I have been blessed to be a part of this community since we were 15 and 16, and our, our hope and prayer for our kids has always been that they get to grow up and have the rich experience that we had um, as, as high schoolers and a part of this community as we grew up. So we're really thankful for all of you guys for making that possible for our kids. Um, our, our prayer for Mav and for Kins is that they would grow up knowing that they're loved perfectly um, and unconditionally and that through their lives, um, others would come to know and love Jesus because of the way they live their lives. Now I'm crying. Uh, the Gonzalez family. Gonzalez family, here they come. <laughs> here they come running. We've got big brothers and sisters. This is their big chance on the stage. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. <laughs> Who's introducing? Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Kirsten. This is my husband, Dom, and um, this is our oldest, Grayson, who will be three next month, and then Walker who just turned one about a couple of weeks ago. And then, oh. Cool, sweet. I think the only thing I really want to share is Psalms 91 has been a big prayer over their lives since the day they were both born. So both have had either difficult pregnancies or difficult deliveries, and we weren't quite sure what was going to happen, but here they are. Wow. Miracles right in front of us. Thank you. And the Dale family. This little one has held on since, I believe, 8.45 this morning, sitting in that chair over there. So, <laughs> good job. Who's introducing? Well, this is Pepper Jean right here. I'm Parker, and this is my wife, Kay. And she's going to have a verse for you. Um, okay, yeah, so this is Pepper Jean. Um, we wanted her to have the same initials as her dad, who's Parker Justin, so PJ and PJ. And... Um, Jean is a family name on my side for my grandmother, who I didn't really have a relationship with, but she was a very devout Christian, so I wanted to carry that on and make sure that she was remembered. Um, and then Pepper is actually from Iron Man, so. <laughs> yes. Big Pepper Potts fan. I chose it, I chose it. Um, so we do have a verse we want to share. Um, it is from Matthew 5. You are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Um, that was just from a sermon that Brandon gave a couple months ago. And it really, really stuck out with me and I never really forgot it. And I just think that that verse encourages her as she grows up to be unique and special and use those gifts and never stop shining so bright for all to see, um, no matter who she ends up to be. And then I do have one proverb that I would like to share with Pepper for her to remember. Um, if you insult your father or mother, your light will be snuffed out in total darkness. <laughs> That was really good. <laughs> um, and I just want to say, Judy. And I just want to say that for a long time I strayed away from God, and it was my wife that brought me back. And I just hope I can pass that along to Pepper and raise her the love that God has given me and brought me back. Thank you. Well, thank you, guys. Okay, was that six? That is. 
So what we're going to do now is I'm going to have all of the families come stand down here on the floor, and we are going to um, hear their commitment and share our commitment and then pray a blessing over them, okay? <laughs> so come on down all the way over here. Awesome. Awesome. You can come down a little bit further. Isn't this amazing, you guys? Just look at this. A oh. little bit further, a little bit further. We got one last one. Oh my gosh, I'll get out of the way so you can get an actual photo. Awesome. So parents, I'll stand over here. Parents, do you commit to raising up your child or children um, in the ways of Jesus? If you do, say we will. Okay, church. Church, do you commit to coming alongside these amazing families and helping to support them as they guide their children into a growing relationship with Jesus? If you do, say we will. Okay, so I'm going to pray a blessing, and if we can make it through this, uh, wow, this is awesome. So if you guys want to extend a hand, um, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for every child that is here this morning. We thank you for how you've uniquely designed them, how wonderfully you've created them. God, we pray that they would follow you and know you all the days of their lives. God, we pray for these parents that at the end of the day, they would return to you. They would return to you for your love and for your grace and for your mercy over them and their family. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. okay. So we'll welcome up the Petersons. You know, the goal is always to keep your child happy uh, until this is over. So <laughs> doing a good job. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jessica, and this is my husband, Brandon. We're the Petersons. And this is our newest member, Eleanor, or Nora Peterson. She uh, is going to, yes. She, thank you. Are you going to help me? Yeah. Um, she is turning six months in actually just a couple of days. So um, we're excited to be dedicating her this morning. Um, when we chose the name Eleanor, it means God is light or God is my light. And um, the season that she was conceived, we were really struggling to see God's hand and God's provision. Um, and so her name, God is my light, that metaphor really resonated with us a lot. And it kind of became a proclamation, a testimony to God is our light, that truth, um, even in the midst of darkness. And so moving forward with her, um, testifying that, you know, in any season as a family of three, um, that God is our light and will continue to be our light. She gets, she gets that from me. <laughs> really in the teething phase currently. <laughs> Good job, babe. <laughs> okay, now the key of C. Great. <laughs> Not rehearsed at all. <laughs> um, last summer, as we found out we were pregnant, um, during the summers, we don't live down here. We live, um, we move away for a few months. So we're away from this community. We're, we're deep in another community. But we, um, so we're there. We're up in the mountains during the summer. And we felt like um, we had this news, 
and um, we weren't with our people to share it yet until we came back home in the fall. Um, a lot of time together, sharing that, praying together. Um, a verse that came to us, I, I wrote here. So we, we found out we were pregnant on July 5th last summer. And I wrote here in Hebrews, I wrote July 8th, 2023, baby. So that's my annotation in the Bible here. Um, Hebrews 10, starting in verse 22. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. So, um, for Nora, before, before we knew your name, before we knew who you would be, before we knew if you were a boy or a girl or when you were coming, um, we were praying for her heart that she would grow up to draw near to God, um, not just to know him, but to draw near to him, and not just to bring herself or bring her worries, but to bring a sincere heart. So, um, a prayer for us over her, um, that we invite you to pray with us over her, is that she would come to know a God who wants to know her fully, who wants to know um, not just her best performance or her, or her best traits, um, but every part of her sincerely and truly and authentically. Amen. So you guys can have a seat, and then I'll welcome up the Samsons. Come on up. And they arrived early, so they've been sitting there very patiently, all ready to be on stage. This is a big moment for you ladies. <laughs> okay, who's introducing the family? Okay, okay. okay. Hello, we're the Sampsons. And this is my wife, Audra. And this is our eldest daughter, Abra. And our middle daughter, Vera. And this is Rosie, and this is baby Beckett. And so today we are dedicating Rosie and Beckett. So she is Elizabeth Rose, Elizabeth from my aunt. And this is Beckett, Timothy Sampson. And Beckett comes from uh, where my wife and I met, which was in our college English class. And we were studying the Canterbury Tales, and they go on a pilgrimage to Canterbury to visit the site of St. Thomas Becket's uh, tomb. And so that's where his name comes from. Good morning. So a little bit about our journey. It took, well, we met when we were in college, like he said. So we were 21, very young, and we got married at 25, kind of young as well. And um, it took a lot of patience. So things took a little bit longer. And I guess the verse that always came to me was Philippians 4, 6, you know, be anxious about nothing. And Man, there was a lot of anxiety along the long, long road, and so things, you know, we had to turn, we turned to some assistance, and we didn't know how lucky we would get, and there were many days that we thought that we wouldn't have children, and it wouldn't be part of our story, but I felt very strongly that that was not what was meant, and I just kept on trusting and praying and praying and trusting, and so we got lucky right away. We were blessed with our oldest um, through IVF, and through that process, we had three embryos, and we were like, wow, I cried. I cried, and I said, three, that, that makes me nervous, you know, and my husband said, but that's what we wanted. That's what we prayed for. We prayed for three, and I said, I know, but that doesn't always work, you know, and so it doesn't always happen that way, and so we got our first, and we were like, oh my gosh, what a blessing, and then we thought, wow, let's, let's try again, you know, and we did, and I, I remember saying, I feel like I struck gold, because it, it worked again. And we said, you know, we're going to wait a little bit. We're going to wait a little bit. And um, life was great. We were loving our two girls, and we got a very, very special surprise. 
our Elizabeth Rose. And she is our bonus, and she is our surprise, and I think I was more shocked by her in 2020 than I was anything else. And, um, and so we waited a little bit longer, and I was like, there's no way we're gonna have a hat trick, three for three, there's no way. And I just said, you know, I had done three C-sections already, and so there was some nervousness and hesitation and a lot of prayer, and I said, God, if this is what you want, let it be, and he let it be, and we got Beckett Timothy, and so we got, oh man, it's, it's been a journey, it's been wonderful, we feel very, very blessed, and we feel that we've been given these four gifts from God, and that we have to make sure that we are doing our best and showing everyone and showing him that we will dedicate our children to raise them to love and follow him and know that he is their ultimate heavenly father. And we still, we feel very blessed to be here and at this church and know that there are so many people that love on our kids and we're just very thankful for this community. So. Amazing. Petersons, do you want to join us back up here? And we'll... Awesome. Okay. Wow. I'm so impressed with all these amazing children. Okay. So parents, do you commit to raising your child or children in the ways of Jesus? If you do, say, we will. Okay. Church, this is your time. Here we go. Church, do you commit to coming alongside these families and helping to support them as they guide their children into a growing relationship with Jesus? If you do, say, we will. Okay. So why don't you guys all stand and go ahead and um, raise a hand to these families as I bless them. And with the word, if the Lord puts a word on your heart for them, speak that out loud and just bless them. God, I thank you for each of these children that are on this stage this morning. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for how you have designed them so intricately and so specifically for what you have planned for them. God, I pray that they would come to know you. I pray that they would follow you all the days of their lives. And God, I pray over these parents, Lord, I pray the word return. I pray that at the end of each day that they would return to you and that they would be reminded and be filled with your love and your grace over them and their kids and their home. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thanks, you guys.